church. Let's lift up our voices this morning. But I also need you guys to be my drummers this morning as well. So keep your hands clapping. Don't let it stop, all right? Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This pack of gold. Sing, I try. Oh, I try with all of my might. But I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond. And just when I I think we can do better than that. How many of you guys believe that you are free this morning? Yeah. yeah. You know, this, this bridge says, hell lost another one, I am free. And this morning we're gonna declare it because it is so true. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed, amen? So I want you guys to shout it loud and shout it proud that hell lost another one, I am free, amen? Hell lost another one. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, hell lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Sing, Hell lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Is hell lost another one? Yeah. 
you for who you are in our life, oh God. And we won't be quiet. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Clap your hands with us. Thank you, Jesus. That's the joy of the Lord in this place, amen. We worship you, Lord. You want to declare this morning, oh God, that you're the God that our worship is never be changed. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the free. Come on, church, shut up. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we want be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We want be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Come on, sing. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. He hang up on the cross and he rose up from the grave. My God still rolling so away. Come on, just sing. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We want to be quiet. We shout out your praise. They show in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We want to be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. Come on, declare. We were the packers, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord come and just lift up your hands, say, we the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven. Accepted, redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing. Come on, church, lift up your hand and sing. And show in the house. Come on, clap your hands with us. Yes, we won't be quiet. We shout. Out. Sing it again. And show. Amen. You surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We oh, sing that show in the house. Oh, that is your. Oh, we won't be quiet. We shout out your prayer. That show in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your prayer. rejoice in your name God God that as we come together as a house as a family as the body of Christ to worship you Lord that you are lifted up higher that you are enthroned on the highest Lord God we've come to join in the many songs that people have sung about you Jesus and we come to sing and to glorify and to honor you and to worship you for you to take your place, your rightful place on that throne, Lord Jesus. So we thank you. 
thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We honor you. Let highest praises fill up this place. Fill it up in this place, Jesus.
Worship him with your own song, with your own words. Continue to worship him. Begin to have, oh, begin to open your heart to him. To listen to his voice, to speak over you.
open our heart to you, God. We lift up our hand and our voice in one accord, Jesus. As to worship, as to worship the holy of holies, Lord. Oh.
presence we are in awe of everything that you are God you are so good you are so powerful you are so wonderful you are so beautiful oh God we are honored to stand before you today and every day of our lives oh God people of God today we're gonna take Holy Communion let's prepare our hearts as we prepare to take it first Corinthians 11 says so then whoever eats the bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves Luke 22 14 says when the hour come came Jesus and his apostle reclined at the table he said to them I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I tell you I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God people of God do you know that only the 12 were invited to this one he has more disciples, but the 12 knows his heart. And today, we as the people of God are given invitation. Even those of you that come for the very first time, there is an invitation for us to come to the table with Jesus. But we need to judge ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, you know, the invitation of God said in John 3.16 that. It says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you have relationship with Jesus? Are you absolutely sure that your sins are forgiven, your life is transformed and that you have eternal life in Him? If you don't, I want to give this invitation for us this morning. Is there anyone that you know you need the grace of God? You want to be saved. You want to go to heaven. You want to have relationship with Jesus. If that's you, would you please raise your hand out and I will pray with you. We will pray with you. Anyone? Yes, thank you, sister. With that, let's all pray. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you I am in need of a savior and I thank you for you came you gave your life you are resurrected to forgive me to invite me into the family and give me an eternal life I want to give my life now to follow you for the rest of my life fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I can live like Jesus in Jesus name Amen 
if you if you do not know Jesus yet please do not partake in holy communion because again holy communion is reserved for those who have already have relationship with Jesus after taking the cup he gave thanks and said take this and divide it among you for I tell you I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes let's prepare the bread and he took the bread gave thanks and broke it come on let's give thanks to the Lord thank you Jesus even you Your word says that by your stripe, by your stripes we are healed. If you are sick this morning, just come to Jesus and remember the price, the amazing, the great price that He have paid. He torn His body for our healing, for our forgiveness. He says, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake this in thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift up the juice. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done. You gave every drop of your blood because blood speaks about life and the life of God the life of Jesus is given for us the believers so right now as we partake this cup oh God we declare the new life of Jesus flow inside of us we have a new life transformed life forgiven life a new identity in the Lord right now we give you thanks Jesus in Jesus name we partake Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We will worship God further through our giving. And the scripture that I'm going to read for all of us this morning comes from Genesis chapter 8. This comes right after the flood. Genesis chapter 8. Can I please have it on the screen? Let's read it together. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of the clean animals and clean bird, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma set in his heart. Never again will I curse the ground because of humans. Even though every inclination of human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creature as I have done. As long as, as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. You know, this scripture comes way long before any loss has taken place. I want us to pay attention in this one. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, what? Will never cease. How many of you know what is our theme for this year? It is harvest. You know, this is perpetual forever principle of God when we are living on earth. If we want harvest, we need to plant. See time and harvest. Again, this is not the law. This is way before the law of Moses. This is right when Jesus, when God restart life through Noah and his family. So this is a principle that people of God must continue to practice. Amen. If you have been sowing, you know, praise the Lord. We're going to pray that God will bless you even more. If you have not sown consistently, you have not tithed consistently. This is a principle that I want you to know. This is true forever. Whether it's the Old Testament, the New Testament, and, and forevermore, while we are on earth, this is a principle that we need to understand. If you want to harvest... We need to continue to plan. Amen. Amen. If you have not sown before, today is a good day for you to start sowing. Shall we pray? Oh Lord Jesus, thank you that everything that we have, 
is yours anyway. And thank you for this revelation of the scripture that I believe will be released upon the people of God here. That they know it's not about the church. It's not about some project needing money. It's about the principle of God from the beginning. That if you want to harvest, we need to learn to plant seeds. So I thank you for the people of God that have sown so faithfully. I pray for a blessing beyond what they can ask for. Oh Lord Jesus, blessing beyond what they can ask for in their prayer that you will give to them, Lord. Protection in their family, blessing in their career, in school, and all these different things in relationships spiritually. I pray even for the next generations to come that they will continue to serve the Lord and experience the goodness of God. And thank you, Lord, for those that will make the first commitment to give. You bless them tremendously. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you are here in, in person, you can, if you are giving via check or cash, you can bring it up uh, to the boxes, three boxes at the front. If you uh, want to give electronically, there's more information on the screen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. How many of you experience God in a fresh new way today? I think that was so powerful and I'm just glad we get to worship God, you know. More than the ability for us to receive amazing things from God, God enjoys our worship, our prayer. Amen. So I'm Pastor Dion. I want to welcome you on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Paul and Joy Stan. If you are here for the very first time, is there anyone that are here for the very first time? How many of you are faithful every week? You know, I want to welcome you still and we are glad that you are here. Come on, give yourself a hand. We have few exciting announcements on the video, but I only have one announcement to underline. Today is the last day. How many of you ladies in this place? Come on, give me a shout. <laughs> We're going to have our very first daughter women's conference and today will be the last day for you to register. And I want to warn you that we actually have a few spots left. And I'm not kidding because we have a limited space here. We're going to have luncheon and dinner here. So the capacity is much less. So if you have not registered, today will be the last day you can register. Amen. Today we're going to be ministered by our own apostle and, pa and pastor, Pastor Paul Tan. And uh, I want you to welcome him later. And uh, with that, let's watch the video and some announcement. Hello, Citizens family. Welcome to the month of August. Today is always a great day to praise the Lord and worship the risen King. My name is Garrett and I'm here to bring you all today's Sunday announcement. Now first to all of you in our Walnut campus, you probably noticed all the construction going on outside and now here is Pastor Him and Rich Wisely with an update. Good morning City Blessing, we have with us this morning Rich Wisely, he's our superintendent of this project and he's going to tell us what's going on. <laughs> Good morning Pastor Him. Good morning, City Blessing Church. It is so, I'm so excited to be here with you today. There's a lot of activity going on behind me and I wanted to give you a little tour of what we've been working on this past week, what's coming up in the next month or so, and an important safety briefing on some things that you need to be aware of as you come to church on Sunday morning. I'm gonna ask Garrett to follow me and come on and we're gonna walk this direction. The first thing I wanna point out to you is that as you look over here, modulars used to be it's getting pretty clean. We have taken eight loads of rocks and boulders and rubble from this site. I couldn't even believe it myself, all the material that came out of here. But in a few short weeks, the foundation will be lined out and we're gonna be talking in just a minute about an event that we're gonna have as soon as this is ready to go. But the most exciting part of the project right now is the shoring that's going on in the sanctuary. So let me direct your attention over here and show you what we're doing. Underneath every one of these, uh, these pieces of wood, you can see it says hole. There are a 20 foot deep, two, uh, 24 inch wide, 20 foot deep hole under each one of these boards. The purpose of those holes or caissons as we call them is to hold this building up on the hillside because we're gonna cut, well, pretty much this close to the existing building down 25 feet as we prepare the pad below. 
So here's what that means for you, especially those of you with small ones. When you come to church on Sunday, there'll be ushers on the patio here and one around the back. Please follow all of their directions. And if you got a little one, hold them tightly by the hand. These holes are deep, they're big, and they're very, very dangerous. And we're gonna have lots of obstacles up. And by next Sunday, we'll have fencing. So we don't really need to worry as much about that. But this shoring project will complete next week and it'll be a little bit safer, but this coming Sunday, let's be watching uh, as we walk around with our young ones. Well, thank you very much, Rich. So again, as what Rich has already said, please make sure you hold on to your kids and we will have fencing around here. Make sure nobody passes through that area. Thank you very much, church, and thank you very much for your prayers. Please continue to lift this up in our prayers daily. God bless you. We are so excited to see the outcome and hear more news about our new training center. Now, City Blessing, be encouraged and be of good cheer for the empty land outside and all the rubble is answered prayers for what is to come. And speaking of answered prayers, I have Senior Pastor, Pastor Paul Tan, sharing about international missions. Hello, City Blessing family. I've got some incredible news to share with you all. Not only have we been doing Compassion Commission in Baltimore, Maryland, but for years now, our church has been passionately engaged in international missions in the beautiful lands of Indonesia alongside with our Indonesian City Blessing churches there. We have 70 City Blessing churches in the cities, small towns, and villages. Together, we are fulfilling God's vision and embracing the call of the Great Commission. In the next month, we have something exciting in the works. Mariana and her husband Rudy, two of our faithful members, are heading off on a scouting mission to Indonesia. They are preparing the way for a life-changing mission trip next year. Hello, Church. In September 4 to 10, we are going to visit our church plan in Santani, the province of Papua. This is what we will be doing on this mission trip. We will work together with our team of doctors for a free medical checkup to teach them to live a healthy life and give them nutritious food as well as spiritual food. We will help develop a construction center in Papua for the abandoned children and eradicate illiteracy and establish sustainable livestock farming and transform the community one village at a time. If any of you are planning to be in Indonesia this September and have a heart for missions, spreading the love of Jesus and making a real difference, this is your opportunity to do it. Together we can spread God's love and hope to those in need. If you are ready to be a part of this transformative experience, please reach out to Rudy and Mariana Let's also come together as a United Church family, supporting them with our prayers and whatever resources we can offer. As we embark on this adventure of faith and love, let's keep the flames of compassion burning bright at City Blessing Church. Let's continue to pray and sow, and let us reach out to every corner of the world for Jesus, locally, nationally, and globally. God bless you all. And lastly, rattlesnakes. No, I'm not calling you all rattlesnakes, but they are real in California, real in Walnut, real on Miracle Hill. If you see one, do not pet, do not share the gospel, do not make friends, make room. Lots of room between you and the creature made by God. Let our security or hospitality team know, and please keep a watchful eye at your children as they adventure out on our campus. Stay alert in the parking lots and around our premises. Now, thank you for your attention when it comes to rattlesnakes. Well, okay, that is all for this week's announcement. God bless you all, and let's get our hearts ready for the Word of God this morning. Good morning. How are you all doing? I... I don't know why Pastor Dion quoted that verse during tithing and offering, and he mentioned about Noah. And uh, today is a special day for our family because the youngest part of our family members, Noah, is for the first time attend the church. And uh, 
And because of that, we, the grandfathers, you know, Yuan and I, we were matching ship. <laughs> so, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. And uh, you may notice that uh, there are some uh, changes in the uh, sound. Uh, is the speaker on that side on now? Uh, not yet. And uh, because of the, uh, uh, the, 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 what do you call that? The, uh, the, the, the building project that we are working right now, some of the fuse has tripped. So some of you are, some of them are working on that, on that uh, fuse breaker right now. So, but I want you to focus on the word of God, amen, because God is going to do something powerful today, amen. And I thank God, uh, I, I really appreciate our tech team, and uh, when things happen, they can, they have plan B, and uh, so they have the spotlight, it is nice for you, it's not nice for me. <laughs> you can see me, but I cannot really see you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why don't you all stand up? Let's focus on the Lord right now. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, you are here. Lord, I know that you are going to work in our midst, regardless of uh, the uh, situation that we have with our uh, fuses right now, with the breakers. Uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you touch each and every one of us. Why don't you pray with me, Lord Jesus? Uh, say it with confidence, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I, love I love you. You are awesome. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you, Lord. Here I am. Speak to me. Change me. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen and amen. You may be seated, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, as yeah, it has been mentioned week after week, month after month, that our theme this year is harvest. My question to you is, have you been harvesting? Have you been harvesting? And I mentioned about uh, harvest of souls and harvest of resources. And you cannot harvest if you don't plant the seed. And uh, if you want to harvest uh, souls, you need to plant the seed, which is the word of God. You need to share testimonies. You need to share the goodness of God. You need to remember what God has done in your life, and you share it to your friends, your relatives, your family members that do not know Jesus yet, so that you can share, you can impart the, uh, the experience, and you share the testimony. And uh, Pastor Dion preached a couple of weeks ago that the meaning of testimony is do it again. God will do it again. Amen. God will do it again. And the same thing with uh, harvest of resources. Uh, how many of you? This is a question. And um, uh, the purpose that you come to church every week and when you come to Carousel and we discuss about things that is being preached from this pulpit is for you to be equipped not only on Sunday, but you will be equipped in life. Because what you can learn, you can learn the, from the principle of the Word of God and you can apply it in your life, in your family, in your marriage, in your school, in your business. Because the Word of God is full of principles and you will be successful and you will, literally, you will harvest uh, resources. And uh, you cannot harvest resources if you don't plant a seed. And it's not only about money, but it's about how about if you plant the seed of kindness. How about if you plant the seed of, um, you know, you help one another and uh, you, you be kind and you serve and you reach out. And those are nice and good seeds that you can plant and uh, you will reap the harvest of resources through the seeds that you have planted. Amen. So the question is, uh, have you been harvesting? And you can answer it. And I pray that you will harvest even more. Amen. Those of you that said, yes, yes, that's good. I rejoice together with you. Come on, give yourself a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. Because I do believe that when God gives us this theme, you know, God wants us to experience it. God wants us to experience it, and there are many things that we need to prepare even more, and um, 
I'm going to go into that later, but um, I want to share to you about the focus of this month. In the month of August, August, uh, we are going to focus on new wineskins. Can you say a new wineskin? Wineskins. A couple of months ago, our focus was the Holy Spirit, and last month was the Word of God. And this month, uh, new wineskin, wineskins. New. Can you say new? new. Say get new. New. So God is going to uh, pour out the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. And um, the topic that I want to share to you today is in the form of a question. And only you can answer it. I can share the word, but you can answer. And you don't answer to me, you answer to God. And the question is, uh, are you ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Because whether you are ready or not, God is going to do it. Whether you want it or not, whether you want Him or not, um, God is going to do it. So are you ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And uh, in uh, about 10, 15 minutes, I want the music team to come for, come up again. And I want to focus on the Lord and I want to pray. I want to... I want to pray for the sick. And this morning, um, God gave me several uh, people, several, several kinds of uh, sickness that our people experiences. And uh, they, they stood up. And uh, even more, when I prayed, for, uh, when I asked those of you who are sick and many more, stand, stand up. And I know that God is still in the business of healing people. And I pray in this service, God is going to do the same also. Amen? But before I call for what kind of sickness that, I, that the Holy Spirit impressed in my heart, I want you to read this verse from the book of Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 13, verse 17, and verse 18. It says, Others mocking said, They are full of new wine. Why are they mocking? Because... This happened in the day of Pentecost about um, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 plus years ago. And during the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was uh, present and it was a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the disciples, they spoke in other tongues and uh, many people fr coming from different nations, different, different nationalities, they were amazed because uh, they, 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 they talked to one another, hey, how? How come, uh, how, how could it be that all these Galil Galileans, they can speak our own language? And that was so powerful, that was so powerful. But, and uh, 3,000 people received Jesus at the time. 3,000, can you say 3,000? 3, can you imagine if one day <laughs> this church uh, harvests 3,000 souls? Even the training center is not enough. Are you with me? And that happened. That happened on that day, on the day of Pentecost. Immediately, 3,000 souls received Jesus. And um, uh, in the midst of those exciting things, it says, others mock. There are others mocking and said, um, they are full of new wine. Please understand, when we are in the midst of, when you are in the midst of whatever move of the Holy Spirit, there will always be some people that will mock, that will laugh at you, that will criticize you, that will put you down. And I want you to focus on the Lord because God is your source. God is your strength. Amen. And even if nobody mocks you, sometimes you have questions in your mind, in your brain, and your brain begins to talk to, to your own mind that says, this is strange, this is weird, but believe me, uh, you need to focus on the Lord. You need to focus on the Lord. Amen? How many of you want to focus on the Lord right now? Focus on the Lord and focus on Jesus, not on other things. Not, uh, yes, I'm going to pray for the sick, but don't focus on your sickness. Uh, don't focus on your problems or your challenges or your situation. You focus on the Lord. And let's, let's continue reading the next verse. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says the Lord. Can you say last days? Last days. One more time, last days. last days. Can you be more energetic? Can you say in the last days? Last days. 
All right, that's a lot better. Okay, in the last days, says the Lord, in the last days. When is the last days? When is the last days? And uh, the Bible explained that the last days actually began when Jesus came to this earth. It is in the book of Hebrew chapter 1. It is written that actually in the past, in the past, God talked to the people. God spoke to the people through prophets. God sent prophets after prophets after prophets. And you can read in the Old Testament, many prophets were sent and they talk, they convey, they deliver the message to the people. But many of them, many of the people, they don't believe. They don't want to accept. Even um, some of the prophets were persecuted and killed. And the Bible mentioned that because of that, you know, because many people, they didn't want to hear the message from the prophets that God sent. God sent his own son. And in the last days, in the book of Hebrews says, God, in the last days, God sent his son, his own son, to the people <clears throat> to deliver the message. And uh, the last day, can you say last day again? So if the Bible mentioned that the last day began when Jesus came, that was 2,000 plus years ago, that means we are right now in the last of the last days. So we need to pay attention and we need to really focus on the Lord. So it says that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Can you say all flesh? All flesh. Upon all flesh is not only to you Christians, to you that go, go to church. To all flesh, that means all flesh. And uh, it is not um, uncommon for me, and I believe you have heard some testimonies also, that there are many people that didn't believe in Jesus in the Middle East, and uh, they were visited by, by the Lord himself. And many of them, they got dreams, and one person, one family, and even one village, they received Jesus just instantly. And in the last days, <clears throat> in the last days, can I have water, please? <coughs> in the last days, God will pour out the Spirit upon all flesh. And uh, thank you, Pastor Tom. <clears throat> and uh, so, I hope you don't mind if I take this cough drop. All right, praise the Lord. So, in the last days, God is doing marvelous things. Do you want to experience that? I'm asking, do you want to experience that? Yes. All right, do you really want to experience that? Yes. You really, really? Okay, well, let's see if you, maybe you will change your mind because uh, in order to do that, the one skin needs to be renewed because the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going, God is going to pour out his Holy Spirit whether you like it or not, whether you are ready, whether you are ready or not. And, uh, but uh, you need to renew your, your one skin. And uh, upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions. Wow. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. Listen to me. In this generation, in this generation right now, in this culture that we are facing right now, there are vision, uh, there are uh, dream thieves. They are vision thieves. The thieves that, sh that steal your vision. The, the, the thief want to, want to steal your dream. And God wants to restore it to you right now. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you right now, some of you in the audience here and some of you watching online, you lose your hope, you lose your vision, you have no motivation, you are hopeless. It's like uh, you don't know what to happen, what to do, and uh, God is going to restore because the thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but Jesus come, he came to give you life and life more abundantly. And it says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dream." And when you get your vision back, when you get your dream back, your mouth will be filled with laughter. Come on now. Your mouth will be filled with laughter. Wow. You will laugh. You will have joy. That's one of the songs that we sang just now. And on my maid servants and on my uh, manservant and my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in, the, in those days. 
and they shall prophesy. So, I want to come, I want to ask the music team to come forward because I feel like um, I may not, okay, let me not say that. Holy Spirit, I, I know that God is going to do something different today. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. And uh, I mentioned to you that God is going to heal you and uh, whatever disease that you have. And uh, what I got is the Lord put an impression in my heart that there are some of you here that you have problem with your tear duct. And your eyes are dry. And uh, it's because you have tear duct problem. And God is going to heal your eyes so that uh, you will be able to, to have a wet eyes again. And uh, so, all right. Um, before, I ask, uh, before I ask you to... to, to Identify yourself. Let me tell you about healing. Uh, several months ago, my brother, my own brother, he lives in Indonesia, and uh, he he was a heavy smoker for I don't know maybe forty five years. That's a long time. He was addicted to smoking, and uh, several months ago, he got problems. He got problems. Number one with his uh, kidney. The second one is with uh, his uh, heart. And then the third one is it with his lungs. And uh, he was hospitalized for a month or so. No cure, no, nothing at all. No, no, no changes, nothing happened. And um, uh, from time to time, doctor has to uh, suck air out of his lung. And uh, I called my friend who is a doctor, and uh, he's open to me. And he said, I think your brother may need a uh, kidney transplant. And uh, several weeks later, as I talked to him, well, several days later, when I talked to this doctor friend, he said, well, Pastor Paul, I, am, uh, I don't want to uh, make you discouraged, but um, he may need to have a heart transplant. And he mentioned that he has a heart failure. So heart failure is different than um, somebody that needs open heart surgery. Are you with me? Yeah. So I prayed. I prayed and uh, many other people prayed also. And long story short, any, uh, I'm, 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 I'm concising the testimony. Are you with me? Yeah. Is that the right word? Yeah. All right. And uh, his, lung, his lungs were okay. And then his heart was okay, but his kidney, he has to go through dialysis five times a week. Wow. Oh, he spent his days in dialysis, you know. And every time it takes about three to four hours. And uh, so we prayed, we prayed again.
guys because I won't be. I, 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 I thought that the people focus on me, but I understand that I want you, God. I want the people. I, I want the people to focus on you and not on me. And then he went back to the ministry, and then he ministered to the people. And guess what? There were many people lining up because they were paralyzed. And he prayed for the sick, and they got recovered. And, and, and on and on and on. And at that time, in the middle of when he was praying for the paralyzed, for the sick, the Holy Spirit said, now it's your turn to stand up and walk. And he stood up and he walked.
Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you feel something? You can try to move your legs. If you feel any uh, improvement. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, Jesus. God is not only going to show that there is somebody in that uh, situation. After he show it, then you will hear it. Amen. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. All right. So come on, give Jesus a move.
this vessel, and I'm talking about not only, not only individually, but corporately as well. We as a church, the strategy must change. The plan must change. We cannot just be the same like what we have been doing in the past 20 years. No. God is going to prepare and God, it, God wants us to respond so that we can prepare according to the Holy Spirit guidance. Are you still with me? Yes. Come on now. Oh, praise the Lord. I think I have a pretty loud voice that you can hear me. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, I, want, I want to read to you, and actually my slide is, I only have two slides that I want to show to you. But when I prayed this morning, uh, God gave another verse. And uh, this verse is very powerful. Are you ready to hear? Yes. yes. Okay. This verse is for you. All right. I want to read to you from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. How about if the Holy Spirit make this word as a quickening word, as a living word for you? God is talking to you right now. The Holy Spirit is talking to you right now. And He said, you are a chosen generation. Yeah. You are a chosen generation. <laughs> We are a chosen generation. Is that exciting? Yes. And then a royal priesthood. Wow! Royal priesthood. You are a priest, but you are also a king. And you are royal. You are, you are redeemed. You are cleansed. You are bought by the blood of Jesus. And you become royal priesthood. And then a holy nation. You become holy not because of you do or not because of what you don't do but because of Jesus he makes you he makes us holy yeah. and the word of God says you are a holy nation and then the next the next few words says Ooh, this is so powerful it says his own special people his own special people guys God is talking to you you are special. Uh, some of you are not listening. You are special. Uh, still weak. You are special. Uh, you are. You are special. And I didn't say it. God said it. That's in the word of God. You are special. You are his own special people. You are special. So some of you right now, some of you, you may not have physical sickness, but your mind has been tormented because the enemy begins to instill in your mind that you are worthless. You, oh, you are not like so and so, and you are like, you're being compared, you don't measure up. Listen. Listen, I'm talking to some of you, not only one or two, at least more than five people. You are special. Amen. You are special. You are special. You are God's special people. God said it. You are special. Why don't you say it with me? I'm special. I'm special. I am special. I am special. I'm special. So confirm it. Uh, confirm your neighbors. You are special. <laughs> you are special. So you know that it's not because of feeling or emotion, but because you know it in your knower, you are special. You are special. And then what is the purpose? That you may proclaim. That you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into <coughs> his marvelous light. Yeah. Into his mar marvelous light. So, uh, the reason for that verse, the previous uh, sentence that I read to you, is that so that you may proclaim, that you may testify, that you may declare, that you may share. Share what? Proclaim what? Declare what? The praises of him. 
The praises of Jesus. Hallelujah. The praises of Him who called you out of darkness. I was in darkness. I was not born and raised in a Christian family. God called me out of darkness into His marvelous light. And God calls you for a purpose now. For harvest, you know, you need to plant the seed. You need to proclaim. The seed is proclaiming, testifying the goodness of God. Yes. Come on there. Yes. yes. You use your time. You share. It is very simple. When was the last time you shared the good news to others that don't know Jesus yet? Oh, oh it is so encouraging every time I say that, every time I do that, not only that person is enlightened and encouraged, I am encouraged. <coughs> if you want to get the motivation, if you want to be encouraged, you share the gospel. Yes. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. Let me read to you that verse again. But you are a chosen generation. Last week, Pastor Jim Martin shared about different generations. The silent generation, baby boomer generation, generation X, millennials, generation Z, generation Alpha. And it specified uh, the, 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 the years from 26 to 45 is a silent generation and on and on, baby boomers. <coughs> And let me tell you, this is the word of God. I don't know how old you are. I don't care how old you are. But the word of God said, you are a chosen generation. Yes. Yes. You are a chosen generation. Yes. How old you are, how young you are, you are chosen by God. Yes. You need to fulfill this calling. Yes. And now that you are special, you are special in other words, what do you mean, Pastor, that I'm special? What do you mean? In other words, you don't live like everybody else lives. Yes. The mark on your life is that when others stay offended, you know, you know how to forgive. You don't live like others. You make a decision. Yes, I will forgive. And that makes you special people. You are not the same. Hello? Yes. When others are greedy, when others are greedy, you have learned how to be generous. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yes. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I, uh, I was invited to a uh, small gathering and there were some children, you know, and during uh, meal time, there were actually quite a lot of children and uh, young people, and uh, they, they all, they, they grabbed their food, and uh, the young person who sat next to me, his plate was quite full, you know, before <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on the side, they have chips, chips, and a lot of chips. It is uh, so, so much that if you, if, if he needs to take one of the chips, he needs to be careful, otherwise it will spill. <laughs> so it was, oh, a lot of chips. And then, across the table, there was another young, young guy, and also had uh, chips. And you know what, I, the, the, the guy sitting next to me said, uh, to the, uh, the guy across the table. Can I have some of your chips? <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact same chip. <laughs> Not different kind. So I look, oh, still a lot. <laughs> and uh, I thought he was kidding. He was done. <laughs> and I look at the, at the response of the guy next to us, you know, and he said, yes, sure. And guess what? The guy next to me, he took it. <laughs> that is what you call greedy. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is not only talking about the kids, talking about 
the younger generation. Sometimes the adult generation can be greedy too. But if we want to have a new wine skin, we need to prepare the new wine skin. We need to learn to be generous. And everybody can say, Amen. 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 When others try to take advantage of people, you know how to be, how to live with integrity. Yeah. Not to take advantage. Just because so and so has something, and just because of so and so has more money, just because of so and so, you don't have, you don't take advantage and do not, do not have entitlement mentality. <coughs> Are you with me? Yeah. I'm entitled to be helped. I'm entitled to be served. No, 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 no. Our model is Jesus. Yeah. Don't take advantage. We need to be, we, we need to be people of integrity. And that makes us, that makes you special people. In other translation it says peculiar people. You are peculiar people, special people. God has special people. And I pray that you are all special people. Amen. Come, come on now. So that means, in other words, you are not like the other business people that you play golf with. You are not the same with your business friends that cheat. You are different. And again, because you need to prepare this wineskin. This wineskin, this attitude within. So that means you are not the same with your friends in campus that says to you, everybody is doing it. So it's okay for you to compromise. Everybody is doing it. No! Just because everybody is doing it, you are special people. Remember, you are special. When everybody is uh, gossiping, uh, you don't, you don't uh, enlarge your hearing ear and, oh, what, what, what is he talking about? What, who? And then, no, 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 no. You are special people. You will stand up and say, I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to join you. It's not because that, it's not because that you think that you are better than them, but it is because if you practice together with them and you involve, there is no life in it. There is no life. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Not that I'm too good. No. It is that I recognize that it is not who I am. Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> you, can, you can say this in your mind. You can say, Oh God, that used to fit me, but I cannot wear those clothes no more. That used to fit me when I lie, when I watch pornography, uh, when I gossip, and that used to fit me, but now I want to wear different clothes. Now I want to fix my white skins because I want to make myself ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Why? You want to know why? Ask me that question. Why? Why? Okay, because many of you ask me that question. The answer is because you have been cleansed. You have been sanctified. You have been washed. You have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You have been sanctified. And you have been changed. Something changed in your life. Praise the Lord. And you need to cut away from those stuff. Because that will never produce life in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When many people criticize, even in the social media, 
criticize this, criticize that, complain this, complain that, hey, <laughs> mm. you need to learn to focus on God, focus on Jesus and praise Him, praise Him. When I mentioned about focus on the Lord, I remember some time ago I ministered to one of you here that has a very quite difficult challenge and I'm not going to share more detail about that but it is a serious challenge and uh, he was down, he was discouraged, he was depressed and then uh, one day before I visited him I said uh, uh, the Lord spoke to me, why don't you invite him to go with you to minister to somebody so I said okay so I went to his house and I said, oh, okay, and we talked for a little bit and then I said, I want you to go with me right now, let's minister to someone. And he looked at me like, me? Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so he comes with me. And then when we minister to the other person, and that person has so much more problem than he does. <laughs> On the way home, that guy said, Pastor Paul, I have no reason to complain. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? He has more problems than me. So from now on, I want to rejoice. And because of that, he was healed. Wow. He was set free. Yes. So don't focus on yourself too much. Yeah. Because this one skin needs to be in you. Amen. Stand on your feet right now. I told you I'm not going to preach long. <laughs> to be continued. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm proud of you. I know some of you are sweating for oh, yeah. me. me. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think it's good if the music team can come up again and we can sing praise to the Lord. And I want you to go home with this attitude. Focus on the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Focus on the Lord. Don't focus on your sickness. Focus on the Lord. Yes. And ask God yes. to renew this one skin. To prepare this one skin. Our mindset, the way we think, the way we perceive things. And God will give you insight. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. 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 God will give you insight. You didn't have this insight before. But because of the insight that the Holy Spirit will, will put in your heart, you will be able to understand and you can see hindsight that you didn't understand why those things happened last year or two years ago or even more. You didn't understand why that happened. But now, now, because of that insight, you can say to yourself now, Oh God, thank you. I didn't understand why those things happened to me three years ago, ten years ago. Oh, but now I understand. God revealed to you why you go through that thing behind you and you get a fuller understanding because of the Holy Spirit and because you have this insight and you can, you can understand your hindsight and you don't complain anymore. God will give you a foresight. God will be able to say to you, this is my plan, this is your destiny. You are destined for greatness. Oh, hallelujah. You are special people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's sing this song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I don't want you to go home the same. I want you to have the assurance that you are accepted, you are special, you are forgiven. Many of you here, you have not received Jesus. Raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody? Next one. I want to ask. Some of you, you need to recommit yourself to Jesus. You need to recommit yourself to God. You know that, you know you have been lukewarm in the past months and even years. And right now, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You want to recommit yourself. Now is the time. You make a commitment, not to me, but to God. So, anybody here? That's me, that's me. I want to recommit myself to Jesus. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Anybody? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm here to encourage you so that you will be lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for my brother here as he recommit his, his life to Jesus. Nobody look around. I want you to just pray. And I pray right now that he will be on fire. No more backslide. No more lukewarm. But now I'm on fire for you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All glory, all honor. Come on.